Hi everyone. Today's video is how to get help with your electric wheelchair when experiencing a breakdown and you aren't home. Only very basic maintenance is performed at the side of a road. In the past six years, only the following three things have been done to my electric wheelchair in this situation. One, replacing a flat tire. Two, replacing a screw which has fallen out of the wheelchair frame. And three, resetting one of the electric wheelchair circuit breakers. The most important thing to focus on in a roadside breakdown is getting yourself home safely and then once home making arrangements for your electric wheelchair to be fixed. A good electric wheelchair service company will have a standby strategy already in place for roadside breakdowns including getting you home and providing you with a loaner wheelchair if yours can't be fixed within two to three hours. Part of this requires your communication skills to set the repair in motion. If you struggle with mental health issues, I do understand to make provision for this, you need to have someone in your life who is readily available to call the service company on your behalf in the event of a breakdown. In the event of a breakdown, it is better to make a phone call to your servicing company than emailing one of the technicians. You never know if a technician has called in sick, is on vacation, or tied up in another job by using email, you may not get a response or even acknowledge that you're in the situation for more than an hour. It's best to call and speak with someone to work out how you will, how you will respond. Where I live, I am eligible for funding every five years for a new electric wheelchair. I keep my previous electric wheelchair as part of my backup plan in case my newest electric wheelchair is going to be broke down for more than a few days. This provides me with the means of mobility in the evening hours, overnight, as well as if it's a weekend or holiday without having to pay a premium for service. There's obviously a reason why I or you would receive new funding, so there is something wrong with the wheelchair. My purpose in keeping my old one is to get me around my home to manage the necessities of day-to-day -day life until either a repair has occurred or a loaner wheelchair has been given to me and is repaired. I'm talking about accessing the toilet, food, as well as some social interaction at your home. This is especially important for someone who has either no mobility or very, very limited mobility. A standby electric wheelchair needs to be recharged every six weeks. Even when a wheelchair is powered off, there is still electricity going to the joystick because it's really not off. It actually goes into a standby mode when you're not driving it and you've turned it off. Typically, battery chargers can be switched from one electric wheelchair to another. You need to confirm this with your service technician to ensure you don't overwhelm 
or wreck the electronics of either a new or old wheel wheelchair using the charger that did not come with it. But that's the advice that I received. As well, we've changed the tires on the spare one to be solid inner tubes so I will never have a flat tire in the loaner and can at least get around my home in the event of an emergency. To prepare for a breakdown, there are a few things you can do that will make your life easier. Carry the following phone numbers with you whenever you leave your home with your electric wheelchair. The phone number for the business that services your electric wheelchair. When you first receive the wheelchair, you should have a discussion with them about repairs so you already have a basic game plan in mind for when it breaks down. This way, you don't feel anxiety welling up in you when your electric wheelchair needs servicing. Two, you should have the phone number for public transit in your community with you. They may become essential for rescuing you in the event of a breakdown or be able to redirect someone to assist you. Three, wheelchair accessible taxi services. Call around town, find out which taxi companies have wheelchair accessible taxis and keep their numbers with you. And four, the non-emergency police phone number. If all else fails, a police officer could help arrange you to get you home as well as prevent you from entering a life-threatening situation such as exposure to the heat or cold. Step two is carry the serial number of your electric wheelchair with you. In the event of a serious breakdown, this will help your service technician contact technical support to help figure out what has gone wrong with your wheelchair. It's very awkward for a service technician to read the serial number of your electric wheelchair while you're on the side of the road broke down. Step three, put together the following roadside repair kit. It should contain a spare inner tube if you have air-based tires, a hand-operated air pump, a tool to remove tread from tires, the same idea as what's used for a bicycle, emergency tire repair foam. This may provide temporary means of inflating a tire in order to get you home and out of the elements such as extreme heat or cold. Five, a set of Allen keys for your wheelchair. Know if your electric wheelchair uses imperial or metric type of Allen key. Six, a set of spare bolts. Seven, a hypothermia blanket. Eight, money for a payphone. Nine, a cell phone which has been charged. All cell phones in Canada and the US are able to call 911 even if they are not active. You may hear in the media of children calling 911 when a parent gives them the old cell phone. So at the bare minimum, you would be able to reach an emergency number, but you need to know first that you are in an emergency situation before using the 911 service. This is why I suggested the alternative non-emergency police phone number. 
However, being in the extreme cold would become life-threatening for someone in an electric wheelchair who did not plan to be outside for an hour or more. As well, number 10, money for a taxi ride home. On a piece of paper, number 11, your name, address, phone number, and any medical conditions you have been diagnosed with. And number 12 also wrote down the emergency contact name, phone number, address, and email address of a friend who would help in the event of an emergency. You should also keep your local hospital up to date with your emergency contact and chronic medical diagnosis. This is for the in, in the event you end up being transported there and are unable to speak for yourself. The only preventative maintenance you can do yourself is keeping the electric wheelchair clean, tires inflated, and if applicable, the correct air pressure in an air-based seat cushion, such as the Rojo brand. The parts on an electric wheelchair are considered consumable. If a part breaks, sadly it isn't repaired, it is replaced. An electric wheelchair is likely to need frequent repairs between when it is three and a half and five years old. I found that the part which most frequently wears out are the bearings. A symbol of the bearings wearing out is flutter in the wheels, such as a fish's tail flapping back and forth rapidly. You could save yourself a lot of money for maintenance if there's someone in your life who is handy with automobiles and is able to replace bearings for you. Parts are readily available online as well as the service manual for your electric wheelchair. This is an option for someone who has to pay cash for the repairs. Of course, I do need to say, use your discretion you should not be putting yourself in a worse situation and need to know when it's better to pay for help than doing it yourself or having a buddy do it. Typically, changing the frame or wiring of an electric wheelchair voids the warranty. If you want to personalize it, use an adhesive such as PL9000 or ex accessing existing bolt holes or universal tracks to add additional accessories. In my case, I've added a GPS as well as LED lighting. When you look at the cost of an electric wheelchair compared to an electric bike or scooter, what you are paying for is the research and development that goes into future products. I personally have strong convictions that the cost of electric wheelchairs is gouging. I was recently told the component it costs about 20% of what the end user pays. Unfortunately, when someone or something is deemed medical, it's often heavily overpriced. The more handy you are and the more you're able to do for yourself, the better your experience with the wheelchair will be and save you a lot of money or a pocket for repairs. But there is a fine balance in asking for help compared to changing an inner tube, or for example, with a flat tire. Before committing to a particular brand of electric wheelchair, I would suggest you search online and see the types of reviews 
it is getting as well as the manufacturer in general so you have an idea of what to expect. Electric wheelchairs are not indestructible. They will break down with use. If you're a heavy user, you need to disclose this up front to your sales representative. Failing to communicate this could lead you to be in the situation of ongoing expensive repairs. While scooters are less expensive up front, they tend to need more maintenance in a five-year schedule. There's pros and cons to scooters. A salesperson will say nay or yay depending on your disability and your specific needs. However, it's sometimes better to fork the additional out-of-pocket expense if your health care covers even 75% of the cost of an electric wheelchair. Electric wheelchairs have a smaller footprint and are therefore able to get you around your home as well as the stores where you shop and do business. You should also be asking your sales representative if they signed a quota to buy a certain number of units from a manufacturer during the year. You need to know if you're getting a wheelchair the salesperson recognizes fits your lifestyle or is just pushing a product. I want to give you some examples of how wheelchairs differ one from another. The two examples I thought of are this. First, the placement of the power wheel demonstrates how much space an electric wheelchair needs to turn in a circle. The technical term for this is the turning radius. When the powered wheel is in the middle, you have a smaller turning radius. This works exceptionally well for some indoor scenarios. Secondly, the placement of the powered wheel can have a big impact on the distance your electric wheelchair is able to drive. The placement of the powered wheel can affect the shape, the battery compartment, how and how it was designed, therefore determining how much battery power you're able to transport. These are two important questions to be asking when purchasing your next wheelchair. The program I receive funding for my electric wheelchair through requires that it be my primary means of mobility. An occupational therapist needs to be satisfied that I will follow through with using the equipment. Your bedroom and living space needs to be wheelchair accessible. This may mean adding a ramp or making a different room in your home, your bedroom. There is some give and take in this. A level of trust needs to be given. If an electric wheelchair is being recommended by an occupational therapist, it's also reasonable to ask them how the layout of your house should change and if they have any other insightful tips for you. This is especially helpful if this is your first electric wheelchair and you've just lost your mobility. Personally, I needed to agree to do my own grocery shopping for the first occupational therapist to have been satisfied to make the recommendation to provide me with an electric wheelchair. Given the economic climate, the replacement electric wheelchair indicated I was a chronic electric wheelchair user. This is the politically correct way of receiving the funding in an economic downturn when they're looking to not give people tools and resources. 
let your occupational therapist lead you in the process. They are tuned in to what's going on and make a good advocate for you. I've had a number of very positive experiences with occupational therapists. I also pay attention to the attitude of the service technicians who repair my electric wheelchair. You can tell how the management runs their repair company if the service technicians are making inappropriate off-the-cuff comments about finances. I personally won't involve myself in a company where money is more important than clients. I do understand businesses need to make money. There's a difference in attitude where a company is very focused on making money and not giving the quality service. These are the details that I thought I could share with you to help you with breakdowns as well as planning ahead for future breakdowns. I want to thank you for the time we spent together today. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.